McClelland, Editor-in-Chief of the Northern Miner. I'm at the International Metal Symposium in London, and I'm with Brent Johnson. He's Vice President of the Environment with Dundee Sustainable Technology. Brent, you've got some exciting stuff happening. You've got a new process to remove cyanide from the, from the processing of gold. Can you tell me uh, how it works? It's called uh, Clever. Yeah, I um, absolutely exciting, exciting technology that's been around for some time now. We've been developing this for about 10 years, building a significant data set around its, its efficacy. And, and yeah, we like to, to challenge the, the orthodoxy that cyanide is the only thing out there. Um, it has a number of environmental risks, as you know. Um, and it's, it's certainly not going away anytime soon, but we see Clever, which is a cyanide-free alternative, as, as, a, as really a very viable alternative to, to gold extraction that gets rid of a lot of the, the downstream, ris downstream risks. So right. effectively, it uses uh, sodium hypochloride with a catalytic, catalytic uh, amount of sodium hypobromide to rapidly bring gold into solution. And those are, those are benign household chemicals, effectively. You know, so certainly the sodium hypochloride, that's household bleach. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so how does that compare on a, on a cost basis? It must be uh, much cheaper. Very favorably, very, very fav favorably. And we have lots of modeling studies, anything from, you know, 1,000 ton per day a plant, plant right up to 10,000 10, tons per day. And it certainly, certainly uh, 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 compares very favorably to cyanidation. And more importantly, it takes a lot of the risk out of, of, uh, out of the process. So, for instance, we produce... Uh, um, um, dry tailings. Okay, so yeah. so so it negates the use for, the use or the need for tailings dams. The tailings can be uh, uh, so, uh, commingled or, or mixed with with waste rock. It's benign. There's there's uh, recycling of reagents. The plant size is a lot smaller. Typically, you can use seawater if logistics allow. So there's lots of other advantages. Right, right. Advantages. So how important is this for permitting uh, going forward? It must be you know a way to sidestep some uh, risk. Absolutely. I mean, you know the political and social licensing stuff is becoming more and more focused on cyanide. And, you know, the, the sort of cyanide lobby is, is saying, well, cyanide is okay, but it, it is until it isn't. And we've seen that very recently, that there's always risk associated with it. So any authority or regulator looking at this technology, we think, is going to be very enthused and positive about its advantages because it takes away risk and, importantly, long-term legacy risk. So you don't have this mass... Of, of, of cyanide that sits there, uh, and, and, and I mean, some of it can be long-lived, especially if it moves into the soil, post-closure, and then it becomes a regulated problem. You know. And what are, who are some of the jurisdictions that are looking at it, at using it or adopting it, or maybe in codifying it in their regulations or allowing it, or how's the response been? Well, we've got a, a great relationship with, with Newmont. We've uh, just, we've been privileged enough that they've renewed their license to test our technology for the fourth year. In a row, so that's fantastic. I mean, that's a serious player. Right. Where are they using it? They, in their research facility in Denver. Uh, right. Yep. And um, certainly we have got lots of other prospects ranging from operations in East Africa to Brazil to Indonesia. So globally, it's, it's, it's applicable to many different types of ore types, okay? particularly complex ore types that, hasn't, that haven't been amenable to cyanide in the past. Um, and there is a move. I mean, many jurisdictions are limiting or banning the cyanide, and I think it's 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 still a long way to go. And regulators need to be sensible. You know, cyanide is still it's still the most reliable baseline uh, process in their minds. But there are alternatives, and we're trying to move the needle on getting industry to think. Well, their ideas of alternatives are maybe ten years old now. It's we, we've got over ten years of data. It's safe. And, and comparable to the to the mainstream methods. That sounds great. Now you've got another process. It's yep. called glass lock, and that's about arsenic. Can you tell me about that? What's the history there, and what's uh, what's yep. happening going forward? It's a very interesting there. I mean, that's sort of my background from a smelter in Namibia that produced in the hundreds of thousands of tons of arsenic trioxide. It's a right. highly carcinogenic, uh, high risk chemical, and this process is really the only way to 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 stabilize and fix this stuff permanently. It vitrifies it, turns it into glass. A natural analog or comparison would be obsidian. Right. Um, and th this really, what it does is it just makes the uh, the arsenic trioxide completely mobile. So it doesn't leach anywhere. It's locked as it is in glass. Um, and it's been recognized by the US EPA, amongst others, as really the best way of dealing with this with this compound. Which That's is, yeah, sorry, it's, it's often associated with gold mining or not. It can come off copper smelters. Right. Arsenic trioxide can be derived from old roaster operations in gold mines. So it's a, 
it's, it comes from many, many different sources. Yeah. That's fantastic. Now, why don't we sum up with maybe, you know, hit the uh, community here with some three or four reasons why they should back Dundee Sustainable Technology. Well, I think, you know, we like to, as our CEO says, talk in numbers, talk with numbers. So what we, we're encouraging industries to, to send us samples of your nastier stuff, all of the companies. Oh, yeah. And we'll, we'll, you know, we can, we can almost guarantee we can match recovery or better it. We'll always do a side-by-side -side comparison with cyanidation. Um, and we see this as the future, very, you know, very, very positive, very enthused by it, lots of support from government, particularly in Quebec, who support the development, the R&D behind this. And uh, we've heard from, from, from many of the speakers uh, here today that, that things like tailings dams are almost an anachronism. We don't need them anymore. There's no need in the industry to, right. pr pr to, to have this massive risk. Um, so not only do you remove cyan cyanidation from, from Teva, for instance, using Teva, but you're also removing a whole lot of other risks. So there's, there's a constellation of, of, of reasons, if, if I can put it that Fantastic. way. Fantastic. <laughs> Sounds like a, a short circuit to social license. Uh, yes, it does, and, 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 and very good carbon credentials as well, um, yeah. because you're, you know, you're reducing plant size, all that sort of stuff as well. So it ticks all the boxes. That's fantastic. Brent Johnson, fantastic to have yeah. you here, Vice Thanks President Colin. of the Environment with Dundee Sustainable Technology. I'm Colin McClelland with the Northern Miner. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks, Colin. <laughs>